Hey gang, welcome back for another video here on Jochem. Okay, so I know in this section with S dealing with ester enolates, I know I've sounded like a broken record. In this video, you guessed it, we're not learning anything new. We're basically combining the new concept of, you know, 1,3-dicarbonyls and whatever flavor they come in as far as, you know, two ketones, a beta, uh, beta, 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 beta keto ester and a, um, a diester and then doing something we've already learned with it. So in this video, I want to talk about Michael additions. That's right. They're retro, baby. We're bringing them back. So I want to also correct myself from a previous video. A Michael addition is when you have some type of enolate, whether it be a traditional enolate or an ester enolate, and you attack a four, you do a one four addition. So basically, a Michael addition is strictly, strictly, and I was a little bit loose with this definition in the past with cuprates specifically. But a Michael addition is when you have an enolate and it does a one four addition. Okay. Okay, so what we're gonna talk about in this video, I wanna do three examples because we've already done Michael additions and it truly is a lesson learned that if you put in the work from the start of OCHEM 2, you don't have to go back and relearn things. I know it's a lot of information, but, and I'm not saying that, you know, the first time you may watch this video or the first time you see this again in class after not having looked at a Michael edition in a long time, you don't have to be an instant expert but hopefully put the time in then so that it's not completely re reinventing the wheel if you have to refresh yourself, right? So it's all about just learning those principles, not memorizing, but you know, learning the general concepts and thinking through them and why it, things do happen with a Michael edition. And then you, know, you can then layer stuff on top of it like we are about to do. So the general principle with a Michael edition is that we're doing a one four addition, right? And let's quickly, you know, double back on what that is. So if we had something like this, and we had some type of Grignard like this, an ethyl Grignard, right? We know with a carbonyl, we can do what's called a one two addition, where we add straight to the carbonyl carbon, like so. Okay? So when we have a little bit more of a like longer system, for example, if we had this four carbon, oh, whoa, four, you know, four carbon system right here with the carbonyl, and say we had something like an enolate, well, this Grignard is considered a hard nucleophile. It, and hard nucleophiles do one, two additions. It goes straight for a carbonyl carbon. With softer nucleophiles, we can do one, four additions, right? And the way you still number the system starts with the oxygen and the carbonyl, one, two, but then you go on to three and four. The reason you can do an addition like a one, four addition is remember, when we draw resonance here, this is a conjugated system because we have sp2, 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 sp2. So if we draw the resonance, we see we have this type of resonance hybrid as an option which means that on the fourth carbon, we do have this partial positive, okay? So, when faced, uh, when we have a, you know, system that lends itself to doing a one, four addition and we have a soft nucleophile, it will add in a one, four fashion, right? And if you need a little bit more clarification, oh, sorry, that's an ugly arrow. If you need more clarification, I highly, highly, highly suggest you go back and watch the video on the Michael edition to get the more in-depth kind of review and then come back here for the ester enolate Michael edition kind of edition. Okay, so we will be, the only difference here is our soft nucleophile isn't just a plain old enolate, we're gonna work with an ester enolate, right? We're in the, in the context of a 1,3 dicarbonyl. Okay, so for example, if we considered a problem like this, I'm going to choose to use a diester for this example, but I didn't have to. I could use a beta keto ester, 1,3 dicarbonyl just with ketones, but here we got a diester, and all I'm going to kind of toss in here, gonna give myself a little bit more space to draw this, 
I'm going to throw in one equivalent of this, as well as, I'm going to say catalytic ET, ONA, ethoxide, as well as ethanol. Okay. So it doesn't really matter that I wrote catalytic, that just means that it's not participating in the reaction per se, it's just going to help us do some deprotonation, protonation, what have you. Okay, so what are we going to do? The first step is we need a nucleophile. So you bet that's what the base is going to help us do. So ethoxide, this is our hat for us. We know we have two protons here to work with. Doesn't matter which one you pick. Pick one, deprotonate, stick a lone pair on the carbon in between our two carbonyls. It's alpha to them. Okay, now we have our soft nucleophile, right? That's important because we do have a system, it doesn't matter if I draw it like this or not, that lends itself to a 1,4 addition, right? And I forgot the name, but this is an enone, right? Enone because we have an alkene piece and we have a ketone, so there's the enone. Okay, so, what we can do is we know through the resonance, right? We drew resonance down here. I'll draw it again. The conjugated system can also be represented like this. We know that fourth carbon right here is susceptible to nucleophilic attack. This carbon is interested in that. So we attack here. We bounce electrons up here. Finally, kick down here. T O they didn't touch anything regarding the ester at all. So now I'm going to asterisk this carbon. I'm going to dot this carbon. So my asterisk carbon, I can draw a line, and I know that's to my dot carbon. And off of the dot carbon, I have one, two, three carbons. One, two, three. And it's on the away from the dot carbon, one, two position. One, two, wait, one, two, sorry. I'm going to give myself a little bit more space. I have my ketone. This is our final product. And for those who really put the time in on their Michael additions when we first learned them, I hope you're wondering, or not wondering, I hope you're remembering the built-in check. Michael additions produce 1,5... Dicarbonyls. So, because we work with one three dicarbonyls on our soft nucleophile, these are equivalent carbonyls, right? Like equivalent as far as their position away from the alpha carbon. So it doesn't matter which one we count from, but if we did one, two, three, four, five, bingo, bango, bongo, there's our built in check for a Michael addition done correctly. We should always have a one five dicarbonyl at the end. And you can see that's the case going the other way. One, two, three, four, five. And it's because they're just one position away from the alpha carbon one and one. Okay, so not that much going on here. Significantly smaller mechanism than the melonic ester synthesis. So this is a nice, almost very refreshing, you know, thing to be doing. So I hope this looks familiar. I know I kind of reviewed the Michael stuff a little fast. But all we're doing is swapping out the nucleophile for something similar to an enolate, but it's just an ester enolate. Okay, I want to do one more very straightforward Michael addition, and then whew, I want to do show you all that you can do with an ester enolate a Robinson annulation, or you know even a one three dicarbonyl, and we've done them before, right? But we'll do it with an ester enolate. So one more Michael, and then a dreaded Robinson, which I hope you don't dread that much because. It's actually the culmination of everything we already know. So let me erase this and uh, we'll keep chugging along. Okay gang, we got one Michael addition example under our belts. Let's do one more quick one and then we will kind of tackle the Robinson annulation example with an ester enolate and then we'll close our learning, our new, you know, with new material uh, regarding ester enolates. Okay, so let's look at this example. So our reactant here is just a plain old 
one three dicarbonyl, just ketones. And you can see we do have an enone given to us, so we do have uh, something to attack that is set up. We do have a conjugated system, and it lends itself to being attacked in a 1,4 fashion from a soft nucleophile, which is exactly what we will generate with this reactant and the fact that we have catalytic base conditions. And this base is not gonna participate in the reaction, it's only going to just deprotonate for us. So, if we look at what's going on. Okay, actually, before I go forward, I wanna highlight, at this in this position, we have two protons to deprotonate. And in fact, it is specified that we have two equivalents of our substrate, the thing we will attack, the electrophile in this Michael addition. So because we can support, you know, our reactant can support being deprotonated twice, we can do nucleophilic attack twice because we do have two equivalents of substrate. So we will do that. So let's kind of go through the mechanism, the mechanistic attack once, and then we can just safely say this is going to happen again. So we know that our base is going to come in, just going to deprotonate electrons back on that carbon up top right there. Enter in our substrate, which we know if I go ahead and draw some resonance down here, got a conjugated system. These electrons can swing up here. These can kick up. So we do have a partial positive charge seen through our resonance. That is on the fourth carbon if we number like so, okay? So we do have a soft nucleophile in the fact that we have an enolate, right? So we will attack like this. Attack on four, electrons kick up, electrons kick up there. And I think I forgot to draw this in the last example, but remember when you do a Michael addition, so here, I will asterisk this carbon, I will dot this carbon. So straight down, we have our ring. And it's, you know, dot one, two, one, two. I forgot to kind of represent the aftermath of the attack like this, but remember, you form an enolate and it flips to its carbonyl form. And the way that happens is these swing down we're going to have some force, some source of proton, and that source of proton is, you know, whatever your catalytic conditions kind of specify. I'm just going to go ahead and draw this up here, actually. And remember, we can double check ourselves that this is the correct answer by the fact that we can do one, two, three, four, and five, we in fact did generate a one, five dicarbonyl. And I'm actually gonna stop myself talking because that would be our answer if we had one equivalent, but we have two. So this is not the final answer. This is almost the final answer. So in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and just actually erase this in here. So, down here we would have whoop. but remember we have another proton here so we can do this again so our final answer is going to look like this to cheat one two three four five one two three four five and that should be one two three four five one two three four five bam there's our answer right we do the Michael addition twice because we have the ability to form a nucleophile twice and the amount of substrate we're given is two times so we have one kind of equivalent of nucleophile with one of these and double that but we have two nucleophiles within this because of the fact we can deprotonate twice. Okay, gang. It's all fun and games. Let's tackle this Robinson annulation, then call it a series. Okay, gang. You've done great so far. Just stick with me through this Robinson annulation, which I promise if it's not, you know, 
at the forefront of your mind, maybe pop back, look at the Robinson video here on Joe Chem. But if anything, just come along for the ride. I'm sure you'll just remember and pick it up as we go. Okay, so the only difference here is not really that big of a difference at all. Remember the formula for a Robinson, it's actually just a Michael, Michael edition first, then two is almost barely a step, it's kind of just like reform anally, and then an aldol condensation in base. So, in fact, I'm going to even add heat here. It's not really I'm taking this from the textbook that Pitt uses Boldheart. I'm sure the universities use it as well. But remember, when we're doing an aldol condensation in base, got to crank up the temperature to have the condensation happen. So, let's start off doing, you know, step by step. No need to get overwhelmed. So, we have our substrate right, or sorry, we have our reactant right here, which will be our nucleophile. And we're just gonna do a Michael addition first. That's the first step to getting this Robinson annulation done. So, the very first step in this Michael addition is we need to make our nucleophile. So we need to figure out, so we do have, right, we have catalytic basic conditions, and we're doing this with ethoxide. That's no surprise, right, given our training on this section. We see that there is an OET part, ether character to our ester. Obviously, we're working with the dicarbonyl, so we're going to deprotonate in the alpha, on the alpha carbon in between those two carbonyls. So I'm going to bring my ethoxide in, or anethoxide in, deprotonate, dump electrons on that carbon. Now we have a nucleophile, one that is considered soft and is very good at doing 1,4 additions. Well, lucky us, we have an enome given to us. Okay? So, we know that this carbon is interested in the four carbon in this, the four, sorry, atom in this four atom system. So, one, two, three, and four. So, electrons go up here. We need to bounce electrons here to avoid breaking the octet rule, and then electrons bounce right there. So, this is the attack in our Michael addition. Didn't touch anything here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw my ester down here, just to be out of the way. And then I have, so here's, I'm gonna asterisk this carbon, I'm gonna dot this carbon. Well, that's kind of aggressive. Asterisk is attached to dot, and then I have three carbons off of that. One, two, three, four total, and I know I should have this right here. I should know that this is gonna add B5 positions to one, two, three, four, five, right? Because that, whatever that, that enolate is temporary, it's going to flip to a carbonyl form. And that will be done with some workup. We know we have ethanol available. So electrons swing down. We do some cleanup, okay? Just flipping to the carbonyl. Nothing, nothing mind bending about that. Okay. Didn't touch the ester down here at all. Okay, so you can see the Michael addition went well because we do one, two, three, four, five. I read you it correctly. We have the one five dicarbonyl. Okay, so remember, this is now back to kind of Robinson territory. We need to reform an enolate because we need an enolate to do an aldol condensation, right? And we have a choice, right? We have the choice to form the enolate this way or this way, okay? And what we're gonna do is remember, we see a six, a, a Robinson annulation, annulation, formation of a six-membered ring. So if we consider the, you know, the carbonyl we just had taken from an enolate and made it a carbonyl, if we generate our enolate with this alpha carbon, one, two, and we're going to attack this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, that looks promising, versus 
making the enolate this way and attacking one, two, three, four. Clearly a six-membered ring is better than a four-membered ring. So we are going to take one of these juicy protons right here with our ethoxide and generate an enolate. But it's kind of, you know, when I say the other way, it's not the enolate we previously had that flipped to the carbonyl. So it didn't touch my ester at all. The ester just hanging out. As you can see, the ester is in the product. It's not going anywhere. So we have our enolate. So at this point, we are going to annulate, right? Annulate meaning we're going to get that six-membered ring. So what I'm going to do, oh boy, electrons come down. I'm going to draw a big loop-to-loop. -loop, and these kick up. So remember, this is the confusing, semi could be confusing part. We're having a one, so this carbon is connecting to this carbon. So one is connecting to six. So that means this is carbon two, three, four, and five. So you can see that's how we get this bicyclic structure. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna draw this ring and I'm gonna draw my ester just hanging out over here because I know I didn't touch it at all. And I know this is carbon six and five. And what I can do is I know five is connected to four. I know four is connected to three. Whoop, didn't go with pink there, three. I know three is connected to two. I know two is connected to one. And last but not least, one is connected to six. So great, I now see kind of where my bicyclic structure came from. So now I need to just play like, you know, Who's connected to what? So I know on six, I'm going to have an O minus. Okay. And then on two, I'm going to have a carbonyl. Sweet. We've successfully redrawn this. And we can see that it's really starting to take the shape of our product. Okay. So remember, we need to clean this up. And we do have ethanol to help us out with that. Just to work, like, you know. Just a slight deprotonation step, nothing serious. And then remember, so that was, this was the aldol reaction part, remember? Let me redraw this. Uh, let me make sure I did this correctly. Cool. And remember, you know you did your aldol reaction correctly if you end up with a 1,3-hydroxy carbonyl. There's the carbonyl, there's the alcohol, separated by three positions. Bingo. Okay, so we've done the Michael addition, we reformed our enolate, we did the aldol reaction, but now we still need to do the condensation, right? We need to drive off something and form, to form, off, form a double bond and drive off water. Okay, so remember, there's heat. I explicitly put it there, but obviously we were given the product and we're doing the mechanism. We know the condensation happens. So hydroxide's not the best leaving group, right? That's what the heat's there to take care of. So because we know heat is here, we're just going to bring in the base we're working with is eth ethoxide. Ethoxide is going to deprotonate the alpha position yet again. And then these electrons will swing down, form a double bond, and drive off OH to give us our wonderful product. And we know we did the condensation correctly. Didn't touch the ester at all. And we know we did the condensation correctly because we did end up with this enone right here. So this is the wonderful mechanism. Gang, I hope you've enjoyed this little trip down memory lane. I hope you now realize everything you've learned in OCHEM 2. Does it seem like memorization? Absolutely. Do you have to practice to get good at this? Absolutely. But if you put in the hard work, especially in the beginning, and if you need to go back and put in the hard work, there's still time. But I don't really see it as memorization. I see it as seeing during all these mechanisms of these big reactions, right, of aldol reactions, 
and Michael editions, it's really coming, it really just comes down to enolate form, forming an enolate, forming a new, you know, species of nucleophile that we've seen, which is boils down to alpha deprotonation, right? It's just acid base, and then attacking carbonyls, which we've been doing for a long time now. So I hope you followed the examples in this video. If there's anything that you're unsure of, go back. There's no shame in rewatching it. There's no shame in not getting it the first time. It's all about repetition and just making sure that you know everything like the back of your hand. Thanks for tuning into this video and I'll see you all in the next one.